Hello and welcome to a new video about measurement. This time we're going to talk about temperature measurement. So we'll be talking about temperature sensors. Well, how is this basically working? It's working like any other sensor as well. So we have here this sensor. Temperature sensor. A physical quantity, which in this case is the temperature, is influencing this, temp this, this sensor. Yeah. And the sensor is changing one parameter. Okay. So here we have the temperature. We have the sensor here. Yeah. Sensor. this sensor and this is measured somehow this change by whatever yeah we have to consider that this sensor has some sort of internal resistance yeah why I'm telling you this because we have here some influences yeah? First, uh, first condition, yeah. temperature of the sensor is measured. Okay, so I'm not really measuring the temperature, I'm re measuring the temperature of the sensor. All right. So this means yeah, sensor needs to be of the same temperature than the object I want to measure. Right? Right. Yeah. We're measuring the temperature of the sensor. The sensor needs to have the same temperature than the two measured object. Okay? If the measured object is hotter than the sensor, the, head, the sensor needs to be heated up. If the uh, temperature of the measured object is colder than the sensor, the temperature needs to be cooled down. So, one source of failure, yeah? one possible source of failure is the mass of the sensor. Yeah? Sensor need to be cooled down or heated up. Working better, the lower the mass of the sensor is. It is easier to heat up or cool down one gram than one kilogram. Okay, so it the lower the mass of the sensor is, of course, the material has also some influence, but mainly it's the mass. Yeah? The mass of the sensor needs to be as low as possible. Yeah. Sensor mass as low as possible. All right? That's one major thing. Yeah. Otherwise, the dynamic behavior of the temperature measurement will be, be limited. Let's call it limited. Huh? Then we have another thing. Yeah? Here's the measurement. Current. This needs to be, this needs to be there yeah? because 
then we have to, to, to read out this. The sensor is changing one, one parameter and we have to read this out. And if it's electrical parameter, what it is usually, of course, there are this uh, fever thermometers where you have this expanding liquid inside and so on. All right. Yeah. But this is usually not for industrial mechanisms. Yeah. So we measure this electrically usually. Yeah. So what we have here, here we have some internal resistance of the sensor. Yeah. So we are adding power. which is Ri multiplied by I squared. U multiplied by I, U is R multiplied by I, and multiplied by I is I squared. Yeah? This is heating up the sensor. This power is heating up the sensor. Yeah? And this internal resistance might be also temperature related. So this might be temperature related, RR, from theta, yeah? temperature, I will write here theta, why I call it theta, because theta is the Greek letter for T and it's t temperature, right, <laughs> theta. Yeah? If I write a T, then it would be Kelvin, theta is usual for degrees Celsius, okay. Fahrenheit, I don't know, but here in Europe we are using degrees Celsius. Yeah? So. This is the power added, yeah? So we have a heat up yeah? sensor is heated by measurement current with power P equals R from theta multiplied by I measurement squared. Maybe I will bring the indexes here also, that everything fits together. Maybe I should have done this before, but now I have it. Yeah? So how much is then this influencing? How much? Yeah. It really depends on the area of application. You know, if you have a streaming liquid uh, where the, you want to, to measure the liquid temperature and you have a, the streaming liquid and you add there some milliwatts or microwatts or something like this, this will not influence too much. If you have air uh, and this is not moving at all and it's, uh, it's uh, a small area, small chamber where you want to measure the temperature inside, and you put in, in there a small heating, even if it's very small, then you will influence this measurement very much. So this, what means this power, cannot be distinguished, distinguished, yeah? it depends on the area of application. This is why you usually have some self-warming coefficient. Yeah? So you say this, this delta t, this delta t measured is some coefficient yeah? uh, catheter yeah? multiplied by this power, p electrical power. This is the self-warming coefficient. Yeah. It's in Kelvin. Kelvin per watt. Okay. If we have some, I don't know, streaming liquid, streaming water. Uh, this is 0 0.001, somewhere in this area to 0 0.01, 0 0.001, 0 0.001, 0 0.001, 0 0.001, 0 0.001, 0 0.001, 0 0.001, 0 0.001, 0 0.001, 0 0.001, 0 0.001, 0
so maybe a percent if it's if it's high yeah kelvin by milliwatt yeah. if it's if it's water stand still then you can guess this to 0 0.025 up to 0 0.5 Kelvin per milliwatt. Yeah. If it's air, yeah, then you have quite, you know, then you are at 0 0.1 up to 1 Kelvin per milliwatt. Yeah. This would be then in those mentioned very tiny chambers. Okay, so these things you have to consider regardless of the working principle of the sensor yeah so you have you have self warming and you have to get the sensor to the measured temperature yeah? you have the mass of the sensor and you have the self warming of the sensor those two things will influence your measurement in any case why i said working principle of the sensor well there are numerous working principle of sensors we will talk about next time about resistive temperature measurement what this is and how this is working i will explain in next video for this time thank you very much for listening goodbye